Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton for ID People. I'm here at ID World Rio de Janeiro and I'm joined by Ruth Annas. Ruth, thanks for joining me again. Always a pleasure to talk. Um, you've been talking today about the interoperability, the, the requirement to have systems that work from country to country. Tell me a bit about the topic you've discussed. Well, uh, actually the expectation to have cross-border services and to have a cross-border digital signature and identification is definitely there. Mm -hmm. As economy is global, it uh, needs to be um, tackled or, or answered globally. Mm -hmm. Of course, every country has had uh, their opportunity to build the systems. So now there is a huge task how to make the systems work together, yeah. whether it should be interoperability or common standards, mm. um, that is uh, the question yeah. to be answered. Okay. And which, which kind of organizations are uh, supporting that? Which, which organizations are bringing standards together? Does the European Union take an active role? European Union has taken an active role uh, within Europe, mm -hmm. so definitely we are trying to uh, get cross-border services within European Union, but uh, in the nearest future I would say uh, it's not within the European Union. It has to be third countries as well, mm. because the rest of the world is so big mm. and uh, uh, the economy doesn't uh, keep itself in Europe, mm. it is global. <laughs> So yeah. the, the question to be answered is how to do it, mm. not whether to do it. Okay, and <coughs> the difference between the different systems that have been developed and, and installed, how stark is that? Obviously uh, Estonia has their own system, very active in, in e-government, lots of services offered. Um, one and a half million or so population and, and by contrast we see things going on in India for example with over a billion people. How, how challenging is it to make those systems work together and how different are those systems? Well, the, the systems are very different actually, but uh, they can be uh, uh, solved, these problems can be solved and the systems can be put to work together. Mm. And I think that uh, in the digital world all countries are of the same size. Uh, what you might need is a little bit more of server power. Mm. So the difficult part is enrollment, mm. and that is what uh, most countries have done already. India, for example, wonderful example, mm. uh, gathering biometrics and dealing with identity issues because of social inclusion. This is a really wonderful starting point. Mm. And as they have managed the enrollment part, the rest is, um, it can be done. Yeah, it's kind of a step-by-step -step process, isn't it? But then we, I guess one of the concerns that one might have when you look at this interoperability is like perhaps the European passport system, it's only as strong as its weakest link. So there needs to be a level where you accept, as a nation, you accept another nation's identity card with a degree of comfort. Is there is there a standard that they would have to reach to be able to? Currently there is no international standard. Right. But uh, people are thinking about that because obviously uh, to have something in common or accept uh, other persons, other countries' identity document, um, it uh, takes trust. Mm. And uh, usually trust comes with common history. Mm. So uh, it just uh, it takes time, it's I think. It's a long process. Yes, it's yeah. a long process, but the answer should be uh, here fast, mm. because uh, there is an expectation that such services are needed. Yeah, and that expectation comes from the consumer, and the consumer now mm -hmm. consumes in a borderless way. We consume product from where wherever we find it at the best value, um, and we expect to be able to access the same services almost whichever country we're in. Do you think that's an unreasonable expectation or do you think it's the expectation that will drive the industry? I think uh, it's a very reasonable um, expectation because, uh, uh, for example, in the internet you don't have distances. So very many uh, trips are business trips. People just coming together, signing documents or sending documents from, from one country to another. It's, uh, it's really 
it doesn't sound like a very wise thing to do. No. If you could just save 12 hours and uh, sign it digitally. Yeah. So I think there is really need for more comfortable and trustworthy e-services. But I'm absolutely sure it takes time to get some to common understanding. Yeah. yeah, and understanding. So it's a little bit like the revolution we saw perhaps in the video conferencing uh, industry driven a lot by big companies like Cisco that give us the infrastructure, give us the ability to have a really active, interactive meeting without traveling. The next extension to that is for that to actually be your formal contract meeting where you can e-sign documents, I guess. That would be possible between certain countries already, I would imagine. Um, yeah, uh, within European Union, mm. yes, uh, it is possible. But uh, the most important thing is that it doesn't have to be kept within the European Union. Uh, we have to find some ways to have at least minimum standards or common understanding mm. what should be the minimum level of uh, trustworthiness and then it's just um, you know a matter of time a matter of process yeah. yeah okay excellent well Ruth thank you for stopping by thanks for chatting in always a pleasure to see you and thank I hope you. you enjoy the rest of the event thank you thank you